When a storm comes, it stays for some time, and then it goes. An emotion is like that too. It comes and stays for a while, then it goes. An emotion is only an emotion. We don't die because of one emotion. We are much, much more than an emotion. So when you notice that an emotion is beginning to come up, it is very important that you put yourself in a stable sitting position, or you lie down, which is also a very stable position. Then focus your attention on your belly. Your head is like the top of a tree in a storm. I would not stay there. Bring your attention down to the trunk of the tree where there is stability. When you have focused on your belly, bring your attention down to the level just below the navel and begin to practice mindful breathing. Breathing in and breathing out deeply. Be aware of the rise and fall of the abdomen. After practicing like this for 10, 15, or 20 minutes, you will see that you are strong, strong enough to withstand the storm. In this sitting or lying position, just stick to your breathing the way that someone on the ocean would stick to a life vest. After some time, the emotion will go away. There are many prayers with words that we know and can find, and th that's great. But again, our bodies are a source of awareness that when we pay attention, that our very breath can become a prayer. We do not need words to pray. And I think for me, that was the thing I began to discover in my life. Um, I don't need words to pray. I can just lift my heart and my breath and uh, with this, this yearning for connection. And that comes through the body. So even something as simple as a gesture can be a prayer when there is music and, and we, we move and dance and swirl, that can be a prayer. So everything about us can be prayer in a way that connects deeply within us, you know, beyond these words. Um, so that, that words become a part of being able to pray, but yet movement itself, the very breath of life, is a prayer to God. Um, and when we tap into that, um, you know, it's like you, you just kind of pray all the time. There was a time in my life when I couldn't breathe. Well, I had pneumonia, which I contracted overseas when I was dancing with friends in Africa, in Malawi, with an interplay group. I came home with pneumonia and almost died from it. And that is not an exaggeration. I was in the hospital. I had surgeries. I was on, uh, I was intubated and in a coma for a month. And so I could not breathe on my own. And the funny thing about being in a coma is that you actually are aware of some things that are happening around you. And so I was aware of my breath. And I became aware of every single breath and the importance of that. And as I became stronger and survived, and it was clear that I was going to survive, um, just the sheer gift of being able to take a breath impressed itself on me that I could, that I was alive. 
breathing, to breathe in and to breathe out always brings me to uh, a calm center. So when, if I'm, if I'm in the midst of chaos, I'm able to take a step back and consciously think, okay, just breathe. Take a deep breath because, and we know physiologically that when you breathe in and out, you take those deep breaths, it literally changes um, what's happening within your body and you're able to become calm. And so I now feel breath is just sacred. It's everything, right? And so breath is fundamental to our awareness, to um, staying in the moment, and it's, it's just the heartbeat of life. From the very beginning of Buddhist traditions, uh, breathing is a very important point of meditation practice. In some tradition, they count the breath, or they watch the breath. Uh, but in Dogen Zenji tradition, we don't count breaths, we don't uh, watch breaths. Uh, some people even in Soto Zen tradition, they encourage their student. But uh, at least in my lineage, Sakiroshi Uchamurashi lineage, uh, we don't watch breaths, we don't count breaths. We breathe as natural, naturally as possible, but still it's important to breathe uh, abdominally, that means we breathe through our nose as if the air goes down to the abdomen. During the Zen uh, or meditation, we make sure, you know, when we are breathing, the stomach is moving. This is important to have a deep breath, that means uh, air uh, goes in our body. My teacher said this is important. Uh, attention is always here, but it should go down here. You know, this upright posture, deep breath, and uh, not sleeping, and letting go of thought. Those are the four uh, points. We return, uh, but often, we, de we deviate from those four points. This, this is just sitting. But uh, when we found we deviate from, you know, just sitting, we return to just sitting. That means posture, breathing, uh, not sleeping, and letting go. That is what we do in our uh, meditation practice. So actually, this is not really meditation. Thoughts are coming and going, but we don't think. So our uh, business <laughs> in doing, in sitting facing the wall is keep returning to this posture, breathing, not sleeping and letting go. We really have to sneak up on mystery. Like if we try to use our part, mm, you know, it's like people say, mm, uh, don't, you know, so. We, and we have to sneak up on, on ourselves. So we use something called easy focus. It's one of our first tools. And, and you know, being able to not over focus, overlook, you know, overwork. That's really powerful. And so if we wanted to invite people to breathe or to do anything, the first thing we would do is release them from any obligation. <laughs> Right? And so that's the attitude that we bring. Obligation tends to immediately communicate as, what am I supposed to do? How am I, I mean, people move it directly towards their judge, their questions of comparison. So the more I can send the message and believe the message myself that it doesn't really matter, <laughs> you know? Um, let's take a deep breath and let it out with a sigh, because it'll probably feel good. Let's try it. Ah, you know, it, that kind of a, an approach is more fun. It's the simplest thing to ask people to do. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, if you're going to ask, if you invite people into their physicality, actually breathing, and then the thing that we always add to it is this kind of audible sigh, so it's not just, it's really, <sighs> um, and even bigger. So the, the vibration in the body that happens when you sigh audibly e actually even intensifies the experience of what it means to breathe, but it also makes it obvious. Do you know? And everyone can do that. So even, you know, the folks who are sitting in their chairs and they're not going to move very far, they are still breathing and you can probably make them breathe a little bit bigger and you can probably make them make that sound, although the first couple of times it'll be, it'll be quiet, it'll be polite. Um, but that's, you know, it's just an easy thing to ask people to do. <laughs> And it just has such a profound effect, a profound and immediate effect on us to even do that. So we don't even, you know, there's, a, there's something about our work where <coughs> there's a kind of irreverence or a kind of, we, we want to play this side of seriousness, partly because we are so serious and we know we need that other part, but also so it's not like such a big deal. Yeah. When we practice zazen, our mind always follows our breathing. When we inhale, the air comes into the inner world. When we exhale, the air goes out to the outer world. The inner world is limitless, and the outer world is also limitless. We say inner world or outer world, but actually there's just one whole world. In this limitless world, our throat is like a swinging door. The air comes in and goes out like someone passing through a swinging door. When we become truly ourselves, we just become a swinging door and we are purely independent of, and at the same time, dependent upon everything. My breath is always here, always now, always in the present. Yet my breath connects me with all that is. Whatever truth I seek to embody, I will practice entangling with the foundation of my breath. As I move forward to explore deep talk, my breath will guide me. I seek this deeper connection. Explore with me. <laughs> <laughs> 